Good afternoon. I'm Marcia Parcell, Health and Human Science Educator for Purdue Extension in Dearborn County, and welcome to Cooking Capers this afternoon. And, oh, just a second. What are you drinking today? So we are beginning this session of Cooking Capers. This is the seventh week of it, and we want to focus on four healthy moves. And one of those moves is talking about drinking healthy drinks and or drinking smart. And also we want to talk about choosing more fruits and vegetables and we want to limit our screen time and talk about getting active. So wait a minute, let me take another taste of this. Delicious. So today we begin talking about water and we want to drink a lot of water because most of our body processes depend on water. And so we need about four to eight cups of water a day. And so today we're talking about making flavored water because not all individuals like plain water. Now I happen to be a person, I like water, plain water, so I'm not challenged, I guess you might say, to encourage myself to drink water. But we want to get away from some of those sugary drinks that maybe you might be consuming. So we wanna cut down on the sugar in your drinks and then choose water or low fat milk rather than sugar sweetened beverages. And so today we talk about flavored water. And so the one that I was drinking at the beginning here, and I, the recipes are on my, the Purdue Extension Dearborn County website for you to go and print off that I will talk about during the live video today. But this one is cucumbers and lime is what I selected to put in here. So if you've been visiting with me or seeing my cookie, cooking caper sessions, I encourage you to use your imagination and also to experiment. So I found it interesting. This recipe asks that you remove the rind from the limes today, but often I see flavored waters where the rind is left on the citrus fruits, whether it's lemons or limes or oranges. So today I have removed the lime rind from this particular one, but you see the beautiful green cucumber skins are still on. So this is just one, a half a cucumber and one line. And again, I've sliced that line very thin and then removed the rind from it. And it's been refrigerated. So that's what you will do is prepare your fruit. And I'm gonna show you how simple it is to put uh, one of these flavored waters together here shortly. So this has been in the refrigerator. They suggest chilling it overnight um, in the refrigerator. And then this will stay for about two days. So you have about two days to consume this. So hopefully you have some other people to help you in your household to try out these flavored waters. But again, you can try it. And the other option is rather than putting lime with it, I was using a green theme. You could go and put a lemon in it instead of a lime. So it would give it a slightly different flavor also. So the next one I wanted to show you is they suggest that you use some form of berry and then also a kiwi or you could use an orange too so this one actually is a berry kiwi so what i have are blackberries and uh, blackberries these are wild blackberries so they are just picked um in my backyard or side yard in the fence row and so i'm adding the blackberries to the water and i have just under two quarts of water and then I've sliced the kiwi too, so that it would be easy to assemble here. And now what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and you can see how beautiful this is in the picture already, but we wanted to uh, gain some flavor. And so we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for several hours. They suggest overnight. So, you know, later this evening you could try it, but it may be better tomorrow. So you can see how easy that was. Yes, it's gonna take a few minutes you have to wash the blackberries. If you're using strawberries rather than the blackberries, you're going to cut them into pieces. And then the other thing is with these flavored waters is that you could then use the fruit in a smoothie. So an even win-win, so you kind of get two uh, dishes out of the fruit. So we want to go on and talk about, so, you know, these are hot days. This is the dog days of summers. Um, some of the times we don't talk about it until August, but it really runs for a longer amount of time. So these are days when we do want to be sure we're hydrating yourself. So, you know, have a water bottle handy. Let your kid pick out a water bottle for them to use. 
Try uh, drinking a glass of water with every meal. And then I just showed you some ways to jazz up your water so that you can enjoy flavored water. And then I already mentioned too, you know, having low fat milk um, and fruits and vegetables, they're also good sources of water. So that kind of moves us to our next point that we wanna talk about getting more fruits and vegetables. And so as we talk about that, then we want to talk about the cool, cool cucumber dip that you can make. And so I've uh, already mixed up here in my dish, uh, half, one cup of plain low fat yogurt and then a half a cup of fat-free sour cream. So, you know, if you're not so concerned about, you know, the low fat or something, you can just use plain yogurt and also just uh, regular sour cream. And then what we're going to do is add a tablespoon of lemon juice. And this is another opportunity for you to again experiment. You can try it with store-bought lemon juice, or if you have your own lemon in, try it with real lemon juice and you will not need this whole lemon for one tablespoon of lemon juice, but notice, I think you will experience as I have, that it does taste different with a real lemon in it. So I've added the one tablespoon of lemon juice, and then into this also we're going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of dill weed, a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So this time of year too, maybe some of you have dill that's growing um, live. And so that's a great opportunity to, do, to try it with uh, real dill in it also. Or another substitution would be if you like a mint flavored, you could try a mint flavoring in this particular dip. So we're going to mix this completely. And then, you know, I want you to be thinking about, so the kids, you know, can the kids name a vegetable for every uh, color of the rainbow? So when we start with red, what comes to mind? And if you want to, you can type in comments there. I welcome those of you who are watching this live. And I also uh, appreciate those that are watching the recorded version of the cooking capers. And I thanks the, uh, Lawrenceburg Public Library. They work with me in doing this uh, session too. So we now have this dip ready, but we want vegetables to go with it. And so a great thing to do would be then to make um, plates for people to enjoy. So in this time of COVID or the times we're experiencing to make it less contact, you might set out plates that have well, if we're talking about the red, here are our red tomatoes, which I love this time of year. These are fresh out of my garden. And so, you know, encourage them. Another thing to do too, this um, it might not be a red tomato in our house. This might be called a moon squirter. So there's a story out there. I will never ever eat a tomato. And um, so the story goes on to the little girl that renames this as a moon squirter. And some other things get some other names also. So there's our red. And then for the orange, we could add our carrots. And then if we go to yellow, this isn't so yellow, but it's just close to yellow. There are some people might have yellow squash growing this time of year, but cauliflower would be a great um, one in that. And then there's lots of greens we can have. So these are both fresh out of my garden. So broccoli and cucumbers. So uh, a great time of year to be eating the rainbow. But, uh, and a great way to enjoy a dip, dip that's low fat. So you'll want to try that cool cucumber dip. So it actually has, uh, I'm forgetting an ingredient in here, I, the half a cup of grated um, cucumber. So this is the grater and I've actually peeled the cucumber. So we're just gonna grate a bit more. I almost forgot the cucumbers in this, so. You're putting a fourth a cup, or rather, a half a cup of the grated cucumbers into there. I have seen this uh, dip in a couple different versions, and it is just really a great dip. It is really refreshing. So it's very interesting how the cucumbers add great flavor to this. So I'm glad that I caught that. <laughs> so let's go back and add our cucumbers to this too. And they're grated, like I said. 
So this is a great recipe to make too. You can have somebody cleaning the vegetables, somebody else preparing the dip, somebody grating the cucumber. So a great way to involve different family and encourage your children to be involved in the food they make. They're much more willing to try it if they're involved in cooking it. Now, this is looking more like what I remember cool cucumber dip to uh, look like and smell like. And so now all you have to do is make it and try it, right? Or come on over. <laughs> so now that we've uh, talked about eating the rainbow and we want to go to another uh, thing that the, this time of year is known for and it's maybe those freezer pops. And so this here, is maybe one we would purchase in the store, but this is about 12 grams of sugar in it. So we're looking for versions to cut down on the sugar. And so today, what before I uh, came on, or early this morning actually, I made a honey dew cu uh, kiwi cucumber pop. And so let's see what it looks like here. See if we can get it out of the Again, I made these in paper cups. Maybe you might have uh, your own popsicle things, but here is the kiwi cucumber honeydew kiwi cucumber pop. So it's ready for you to enjoy. You saw how easily it came out of there. So kids are sure to enjoy that. And I showed another time how we, you just use a little um, either popsicle sticks and then you can make tops to go on them or you know if you want to put plastic wrap but cut circles and then slip the center over there to easily fit over the stick and put that into the freezer and they freeze in about five hours but i wanted you to go ahead uh, to see this process too so i have in the blender here we have three cups of cantaloupe and to this we want to add some mango and with the mango so this is our mango and you want a mango that's firm and I had lots of melons that I purchased today so when you're purchasing those things you want them to be firm you want them to be heavy for their size so and I wanted to show how easy it is to cut this mango and so what we're going to do to cut this mango is actually we're going to cut it in three sections a mango has a huge pit in the center of it so um, what we're doing is slicing to each side of it and so you can see this is where the you want to put that stem down and then like i said slice to each side of the pit so you're going to end up with three sections and i'll kind of show you what the pit looks like in the center here hopefully but i'm not going to take too much time in uh, showing you but i wanted you to see how easy it is to cut up in the mango so this is the section with the pit in it and so like i said this is a large flat piece in the middle of this so you're not going to get a lot of pieces of mango from this. The mango you want to, after you cut it up, you want to keep it in the refrigerator. They don't have a lot of, to them, so you'll use them up pretty quickly. So now with the halves, what we're going to do is use our knife, and we're going to just cut sections into this and dice it, basically. And then it's so cool how, so we go that direction, and then we're going to go the other direction. It's so cool how you can do this to the mango and then just kind of scoop it out of there. So I did some in advance. Like I said, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I want you to see how easy it is. And then you're just going to cut underneath the edges of that. And I'm just going to add to my measuring cup here that I have already so that we have a cup of mango, fresh mango to add to the cantaloupe that's already in the blender. So you see how to make these sugar-free pops for the freezer okay so we have now a cup of that mango and as i was thinking about this too you know if you don't have mango on hand and actually this is really cool they were very inexpensive right now they were 67 cents each so what a great time to try it for less than a dollar your family can try mango so we're going to add this to the blender and then just the cantaloupe and the mango are going to be the cantaloupe mango ice pop. So let me try this. Okay, we're gonna need to do this a little more. Okay. 
and you want to do this till it's completely pureed. And then what you're going to do is put it in a strainer and you're actually straining off the juice of this. So the when I did this earlier today with the cucumber and the candle or the honeydew melon and the kiwi, there was quite a bit of um, pulp left over. So that would be great to use in a smoothie. Just for your information. So that you're making most of your food, you don't want to waste our food when we spend money on it. We want to get the most out of it as we can. All right, we'll toss this a little bit. And so we want to be thinking about too, you know, um, ways that we can involve kids. So, you know, we were talking about drinking water. One fun thing you might challenge your kids to do is make commercials about why you should drink water are the benefits of water too. So that could be an activity they do to limit their screen time. And we wanna talk about getting active. So when we're thinking about getting active, you know, you might encourage them to guess how many times they could um, frog jump or do jumping jacks in two minutes and invisible jumping rope. So you don't even need a real jumping rope to get active. And then they could set goals in two minutes, and then you can verify if they did or did not do that. So this is almost put through our strainer to get the juice off of this. So we move processes here. And so we are now ready to strain this juice off of this cantaloupe and mango is all this is. And I think I was saying that instead of mango, if you don't have mango available, you might try peaches. Peaches is another thing that's in season. I know that I stopped this um, weekend when I seen peaches for sale. So that's another thing I encourage you to do with your family is visit the farmer's market this time of year if you don't have your own produce in your garden so that you can enjoy some of the flavors of the season because they certainly are great to enjoy. And if you know you didn't like um, tomatoes at one time or you don't know about kiwi or you tried it and it was okay or but try it again because lots of times we have to try things 10 or 12 times before we know whether we really like them or not. So like I said we're getting the juice out of this pulp and we're gonna then take and put this into cups to freeze. So here's our little paper cup to put our juice from our mixture in. And now this is ready to put in the freezer. Now I, that my experience was, I put this in the freezer for about 30 minutes and then I put the stick into them um, and it worked better to let it set up a little bit beforehand. So as we come to the end today. I thank you for joining me for cooking capers. And again, if you're looking for the recipes, they're available on the Purdue Extension website. Um, they're called Sweet Relief. And then uh, I hope that you'll, you know, uh, encourage your children to try new fruits and vegetables, try some flavored water, and drink more water rather than sweetened drinks that we might be enjoying. And I uh, hope to see you next week for the final session of Cooking Capers. If you're looking for a way for your family to get active this uh, summer too, or beginning August the 3rd to the October the 23rd, I will be doing a Get Walking program. That is a 12-week program that I share emails with you to motivate you to walk. So if you want to get walking, email me your email address so that I can send those emails to you. I hope that you'll try some flavored water or a nice pup or some cool cucumber dip. I'll see you next week for Cooking Capers when we talk about Taco Thursday. Have a great week. See you next week.